So I think it's a combination of various things. So you can't just blame the products or the regulators or the banks themselves, you know, or the consumers. It's a combination, a deadly combination of all these, which you know, which uh, culminated in this crisis of uh, 2008. Your main comment on this, you know, uh, financial markets are built on information asymmetry in that sense. Uh, how do you know when you're financially, you know, sort of launching a new product? That you pretty much cover all the structures, especially when the environment is so volatile, it's so dynamic. What is this balance between regulation and innovation? As an innovator or any financial market, I would say you're trying to push the boundaries of creativity to see how far you can go. But you also run the risk, as a regulator, of over regulating and under regulating. How do you achieve that balance? Also, cyclical strategies have been able to mitigate a lot of the India related risks. And if you see, in terms of the bubbles that were anticipated in real estate, in microfinance, in zero capital markets, a lot of them were actually controlled proactively by counter cyclical regulatory management. So I think regulators have a fantastic role to play. What is undermined and somewhere you know, below the radar is really the role of inspectors. Because Reserve Bank of India is an inspection process, at least in the Indian context, which is very uh, much compliant with the Camus model, looks at every nitty gritty. So you can have great regulation, you can have great compliance, big picture stuff, but unless you have knowledgeable skill sets driven by inspectors, to understand the nuances of uh, a bank's uh, architecture, they don't work. That's the underlying thing that they don't get it. So my point of view is that you must have, with regulation, very good regulatory inspection. Is that the case with industry systems? Or are the industry that is not actually good? I think we can. Of what should be the logic goal of financial innovation? 
Could it be about could it be about creating poverty? Could it also be about helping the second person come to make more money? Could it be about helping the ninety percent or could it be about helping the ten percent or more? So I think I think that the the misconception that there's some kind of tax financial institution or anything that is kind of global that will come there and or misalign it's not. I think that, that you can create products for the profit of an institution but also in the realm of social good. So a couple of examples of product is you know we are creating here in India actually have a product where it's compacted cars. So you can use a mobile phone to make payments, make some money, buy shares, never have to touch go to the bank or have to leave the bank. You can get there's another project we have where we have called Cash Tech where if a uh, government or institution wants to pay somebody with that bank account, we'll send them a PIN number on it, someone will have a guy with that bank and show them. Likewise, an institution will also get the same thing. You know, we're working with some NGOs in Canada and one of them on creating a protection fund where you can help farmers in certain parts of the world who have had the drought and have all the natural calamities by buying this fund, creating a pool of their own capital. So it doesn't necessarily have to be this evil that's in this misalignment that says, well, you can't make decisions. And we have to go back to chapter one, line one. Banks are public trust institutions. We can't get them. Most of all, we must create a brief term to benefit in our model. Whether it's on the liability space, whether it's on product innovation, whether in terms of servicing, you know, incremental plant requirements, we must not forget one thing that's top of the mind as public trust institutions. We must deliver a cost. And as public trust institutions, banks also have a corporate social responsibility. So whether it's manifested in community programs like we do at Yes Bank, but many other aspects of banking today require community engagement to build trust, faith, transparency, and emotion. The emotional quotient also has to be very high as well. Apart from that, the expectation of today's customer is trusty service. You know, also very good product delivery. And through many channels of delivery, whether it's ATMs or electronic banking or, you know, call centers, mobility. So I think it's a very important dimension that we must recognize what we are what are together. And I mean, what I do with that is we also that we take risk. I mean, it's also banking one on one. Taking risk isn't necessarily gambling. And it's the same with banks. This is another lesson that I have to draw for decisions. The banks try to manage we take risk. I get the point. I, I, I'm going to read up what uh, Juan Elko recently said. I want to sort of respond to that in one second. Because this is a debate here. You know, <laughs> When I went to school, I learned one thing very quickly. That risk means when you don't do anything, you take the biggest risk, and you, when you do something, you take minor risk. Something like that. Okay. I'm going to make this point about Paul Monte. He says, uh, often the way we think can be thought of, but if we hold it back to the individual, then we often it becomes the key to the individual. Um, why do you think we talk about risk the way we talk about Greater common good. And that, as far as the individual is it's really about the common method. I don't think we can actually differentiate the two. I think we can also say that there are two ways to understand the greater common good. The way that the banks are talking about that is the common good. And just think of the last time you were talking to a bank, you were going back to the bank, you're talking about this versus that. You know, the bank is doing this, the bank is doing that, I'm going to talk about the greater good. But this is because I'm talking about the greater common good. I think that's the thing. I don't know what the point of that is. I'm going to give you the best answer I can. I'm aware that I'm going to give you the best answer I can. 
to put in the board basically to try to develop the space for large banks like yours, great for players uh, like like others in other economic economic yeah, I think financial inclusion is all about that, you know. So, you know, benefiting the society at large, especially the underprivileged sections of society. And you want to bring them into the financial space. Like in India, for example, you know, the people who are not covered by even basic banking facilities is so large that, you know, it presents an opportunity for all players, whether it's a big bank or the microfinance or the or whatever, you know, whatever type of organization that exists there. So the, uh, I think the opportunity is enormous and there's a lot of good work that can be done by all institutions, all players in the in this segment, in you know, this space. Now, it's just about it. Well, all of you agree that this should be about greater power, this should be about benefiting society and all that. But let me tell you, Big picture talk, you know, with lots of international interest here. In the Indian context, what is work? The bottom of the pyramid, the last sector, you know, lots of illustrious leaders have said there is a fortune at the bottom of the pyramid. I promise you, take the next couple of years to see zero time. I won't be around, but my sweet daughter will be. I hope. <laughs> but the fact of the matter is that there is a model. There is a model. That works bottom down. So if you construct a pyramid, and if you look at the middle of the pyramid, what are the three most important segments that create the maximum multiplier effect on income, on employment, and on motivation, on skill sets, and family well-being? So I, I want to summarize those two concepts: food and agriculture. If you look at the statistics of food and agriculture, the food and agri business is the first source of cash. The compelling, so if you see the penetration levels at 67 percent of GDP, and if you look at the migration, let me go to one more important one: MSMEs. MSMEs are micro, small, medium enterprises in India. The 26 million units, they're responsible for 40 percent of Indian GDP. They're responsible for 40% of sports, 46% of GDP. And when you calibrate those people in terms of employment, there are 6 crore, 60 million people working in that micro SME sector. And incrementally, they hire 1.2 million people. Every year, India produces 2 million people. And so, 1.2 million just hired by micro SME is not a bad deal. It's a very good deal. No, 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 no. It's an economic, economic in a way. I understand everything is a part of this culture. All I say is, there's no great part of this culture. No sense to me that you don't see benefits. Your part of it, benefits your benefits. You don't see benefits in your benefits. No, I don't know. I disagree with that completely. You know why? Because the fact of the matter is what benefits the economic multiplier in the country. Because banks are a macroeconomic player. Sometimes you are susceptible to social economic issues. But the third factor is the third thing. What's the third factor? The day of secure invest in tourism, you invest in banking tourism, and one million rupees. You create, that was said, the pyramid papers, 50 jobs. So the middle of the pyramid is because the question, the essential question was how to create multiplier effects. In terms of multiplying, correctly including jobs. I get the point. I'm going to just focus now to another aspect. You know, while we're talking about this multi percent, why should this not be a hyper occupation? This is it. I want to take the point about the mission. Why does it have to be hyper occupation? What's wrong with the speculation? What's wrong with the concept? Jordan Gecko made wall street sexes. It's all good guys. The market doesn't exist. I like that. I want to take the speech out of the if right now a global campaign on Occupy Wall Street, Occupy any financial district, with the core, I mean, the underlying theme of that campaign really 
Every salary is good for the first time in India. I don't know whether they have a free money. But the fact of the matter is that they are not doing it right now. But it's really good. It's really good. It's really good. It's really good. It has to be a hybrid model, you know, because uh, no single model can really uh, meet the needs of the market. I mean, we, we started off with a branch model. Uh, you know, the, the whole idea, in fact, behind the Police Force Freedom in 1955 was that we would reach out to as many people as possible through a proliferation of branches. And that's what we went on doing till about a uh, few years ago. Uh, when the Reserve Bank of India came in with this uh, additional model of uh, going in for business correspondence and all that, which is an idea we embraced uh, very well. And in fact, uh, you know, we have now over 22,000 uh, business correspondents all over the country. So we have a dual model. We have the branch banking model as well as the, as well as the business correspondent model. And I think that is the way to go. Because, you know, given the fact that a huge mass of the people are still uh, uh, without any basic banking uh, facilities, 
Bank branches alone cannot meet this need. You have to try out other models, which uh, RBI has, uh, I think, uh, very wisely uh, adopted. And I think that's the way to go forward. Because you, you are, otherwise, it's impossible to meet the demands of the unbanked uh, population in this country. Now, how is technology changing? Mobile banking and so on. Is that really making a difference in the world? But if you're really back to Indian uh, banking model, that is Raymond well said, the investment is that we have to build very low cost banks. We must create a total efficiency to outsource them, to uh, calibrate it day by huge model. We must be able to create lean frameworks. We must be able to create complete management efficiency in all respects. The fact of the matter is that in banks, not much time is spent in systems, in controls, in technology, and management. Everybody, every leader concentrates on revenue management. Leaders need to concentrate, really, in my opinion, in Indian banking, and I think for the public sector bank also, in my capacity as the IBA Assistant Chairman, that we must build efficiency in our banking system. The Indian banking efficiency is terrible. So when something as stratospheric as the savings account deregulation, and we have to read a lot more into it, happens, that uh, what is the competition? The competition is who's going to give the best rates on the best service efficiency given by human resources and driven by technology experiences. So we have to understand that there's a paradigm happening in Indian banking despite many other great clouds, that things are still moving ahead in Indian reforms and in Indian banking. Yeah, and I just want to supplement what uh, Raina has said. You know, see, the innovation that we require uh, in uh, emerging market countries like India is actually more of the space of institution. We need more of institutional innovation rather than mere financial innovation. Well, I think one thing that is a huge debate going on about this is the idea of getting it low down to the consumer. Yes. So, that's how to be able to do that. Uh, it would have to be because you know uh, the, these kind of activities do need to be regulated, and uh, the, the only way it's been, you can do it is if it is uh, institution led. But what, what I was uh, trying to elaborate was that you know you need innovation not just in uh, branches, but you need innovation in the way uh, people work. Uh, you know, accessibility is the main issue here for in in uh, in, uh, in uh, financial inclusion. That is a major issue here. Uh, today, typically, even in a branch led model. Uh, you know, branches are fixed timing, they work from 10 to 4 or whatever. Whereas the people that you're trying to reach out in, in the financial inclu inclusion uh, sphere are people who, don't, who work very odd hours, you know, migrant laborers, uh, uh, urban laborers, who have very odd times and all. And you have to meet their requirements. Now, that uh, branch-led model cannot work. You know, you need to get uh, go out and adopt these other practices like business correspondence and business facilitators, you know, who can reach out to the unbanked and meet their needs. That's the only thing. What is it that you have to pick up from the state scheme? Where does microfinance come in? Where do microfinance come in? Fix the state scheme. I can't find both the top five at the same time. Why not? I can't find out the top five at the same time. I can't find out the top five at the same time. I can't find out the top five at the same time. I think that's the big problem. Why not? We can get the top five at the same time. We can get the top five at the same time. We can get the top five at the same time. But I don't have to
você aqui que você vai bater para mim, que você vai ter que Isso pode ser um suposto para você. 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 Isso pode ser um suposto para
sanitation, educated services, and they're all by the blended the blended average of those is still economically viable, better than the priority sector which can be seen in two percent. It's also the same topic as well, and that's why we should just talk about the content of the world. It's something that I think also the incorporation of the world is going to be in the How is the technology going to be in the world? Technology is what has made the difference between the bank's uh, uh, inability in the past you know, to reach out to all these areas where the microfinance institutions have gone and its ability to do so now. Because, you know, I'll give you an example. The BC model, you know, the BC model is uh, based on the ICT, that is the Information Communications Technology. It works only because of technology. Without technology, the business correspondent model just wouldn't work. Now, you know, it's possible for uh, business correspondents to reach out into, you know, uh, the interiors of the country, have the CSP, the customer service points, you know, located all over the place and do banking business there on, on behalf of the uh, banks uh, of whom, you know, they are the agents. And it's possible to capture all the transactions in the bank, uh, bank books because of the technology that is available. Five years before, earlier, this was not possible. But it's all happened in the last uh, few years uh, thanks to a lot of importance being uh, given by the banks to providing the right kind of you know, technology solutions to this problem. And that's uh, come of age now. That's why banks are, are now reaching out. So I would like to, you know, just uh, modify the statement that you made that uh, uh, banks cannot do the kind of business that NFIs uh, do now. But with technology available and with the BC uh, model being quite successful, I think it can do the same kind of work that uh, NFIs are doing. Now. If we can create fundamental and proven innovation as a combination in banking, I can tell you this is abundant opportunity to do this not through pilots but through real operating technology that can reduce cost structures of Indian banks, uh, very, very big banks, Visa and uh, you know, many others around the world. That we can, India can play a global role. I'm not suggesting BPOs and all that, but we can play a global role in actually reducing cost structures of transactions, cost efficiency, payments, 
the famous architecture media is by far the best on Britain in the world. So I think we have NEFT, EFT. You know, it's, it's very good. So we must continue to architect and spend, CEOs have to spend a lot of time. HR 50%, 40% on construction, including HR 40%. I can see this organization around me. Two gentlemen who happen to be neighbors today, uh, Jan Irrigation and Jan Foster. I mean, Jan and Jan Shaw. You know, your kind of applications are extremely applicable to their models. So, today's model also requires the digital engine, the dependency and synergizing with distribution network. Everybody can upgrade their own distribution network. So alliances make a lot of sense. And I've got two remarkable uh, clients and friends right here. <laughs> Before we get you, there's a quick question. Uh, one last question. Uh, while we're talking about distributed platforms in India, uh, the market is not the first one to come to the US and the development of the world. What's the big, next big product in the world is that you can see that all in process and that can affect the world like an HDFG or a trading platform.
it's about life with the energy. And the message is the first other thing that I would say is we cannot keep talking about consciousness. Yes, <laughs> but we have to talk about this of finance. But in modern times, modern is equally viable on level of life. Yes, sir. We have to pay the issue. But you made you made a comment, but you didn't make half of it. To answer all the questions, only question. No, my question is that uh, what are the questions which banks have to face or financial institutions that have a limit? Spend thirty years coming up with a ten percent increase. Now, for the recent financial institutions, okay, they try to set the office in place. They are very careful, but really, what are the processes banks have in place to talk to representatives of them? You said, and if I start to communicate with the bank, so you need to build these up on the instruments. You need a new league of people who need to build bridges with them, talk to them. So you need to provide some sort of. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, see, uh, the banks, uh, banks in India have a huge network of branches. So one of the reasons why we have this large network of branches is that we remain in constant touch with the customer. And I elicit feedback from them from time to time on the, on the kind of improvisations and innovation that they would like to see in the products that the banks offer. So the whole purpose of this branch, I mean, one of the purposes of the branch network is to you know interact with customers on a regular basis and get feedback from them on what changes are required in the. Uh, so th this is a constant process; it keeps happening all the time. I'll just give you one example, you know. Uh, and this is with regard to urban inclusion. Now, urban inclusion is is uh, something which is not talked uh, about in the uh, as much as rural uh, uh, inclusion. Right? But urban inclusion is as big a problem today. And uh, one of the problems that we faced in in our branches was this: you know, there's a huge number of uh, urban laborers working in our cities in the construction projects and all that. And what they would do is they would come to the bank during the normal banking hours. Only clock the uh, bank, you know, so that the bank's other customers just would not be able to get the services that they require. So we devised a, a product for them called Tatkal. They basically they came for remittance. You know, they would send money uh, from the cities to their homes and villages and all that. But all this, you know, uh, led to the branches being congested and clogged. So we we devised a product which is made available to business correspondents in urban areas. We also have business correspondents in urban areas. So this product called Tatkal is a remittance product designed only for this urban labor. It takes the congestion out of the branches and into the offices of the DC. And you know, it serves a dual purpose. It meets their requirements as, as also ours. So it's a win-win kind of uh, solution for. So you know, we keep getting this kind of feedback from customers from time to time, and whenever it's possible to make changes or modifications, we do that. I want to ask you. So you can build very synergistic models between urban and rural inclusion. But you are only micro assuming. Believe me, everywhere in the world, I have studied the models in every part of the world, developed, underdeveloped, developed, and developed. That the only thing that works is cluster agents. We must cluster models. Medium, very small, should be dependent on small, small should be dependent on medium, and medium should be accessible enough to the large. So the clusterization strategies of our country have to maximize the carbon The carbon emissions. And they can very optimize MS and the models. And we can run them like the plan is fantastic. The second point I tried to share with you is that people don't understand the employment multiplier in terms of for every 10 lakh rupees, 50 lakh. Yes, I'm just kidding. Yeah. 
Yes. Uh, see, you know, one one uh, very good example of how mobile technology can uh, revolu revolutionize the financial inclusion space comes from Kenya. Kenya had this, you know, M-Pesa. It, 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 it's a remittance product which they developed very successfully, and it was right, it rode on the back of the uh, mobile uh, technology platform. They did it very very successfully, and uh, but uh, you know, it, it's uh, it's limited in the sense that it's only a remittance product. It doesn't offer other kind of uh, banking services which uh, a lot of poor people require. But that's a good example of the application of mobile technology to uh, you know to offer reach out to the unbanked masses. Now that that is something uh, which a lot of banks are uh, actually doing here in India. We among among you know the various technologies that we have on offer in the uh, uh, in the uh, business correspondent model is uh, the mobile based uh, technology. We have other things like Kios and uh, card based uh, technologies. We have this. So that's something. That's something which uh, I think is engaging the attention of the regulators. So it will be a little premature for me to say anything. I will answer it categorically. Uh, the answer is uh, from yes, then no. <laughs> Do you know why? Because uh, telecom companies must dovetail partnerships, telcos must dovetail partnerships with payment systems. Payment systems must have security firewalls. They must have the ability to transmit money and with safety and protection and be able to commit as a banking service it's uh, on, on, on target. So the point I'm trying to make is telcos need to partner and telcos need to be agnostic because the applications, the apps on mobile payments are fantastic. I've got three partnerships. Look here. They are getting more and more incrementally uh, superior by the day on the payments part of it. And secondly, I don't need branches anymore. Look at 160,000 post offices in India, almost equivalent to the number of villages in India. That's exactly some, you know, one or two finance. Six hundred and fifty. So one is to five over. So one is to five ratio. The post office is a very good bastion. It's a very good bastion because they are strategically fantastic. So you we need strategic financing like Mr. Gujarat said in his class. We need, you know, people to understand how to innovate and create entrepreneurial models without everybody building the same architecture. It's like UID. There's twenty UIDs going on in government only right now. Thank you. 
the output we get. You can even take the time with something in the DC model. There are questions for biology of the DC model. There are questions for behavior of the microphone. I think it's important really to understand and the stuff the lack and the technology that we are talking about can really be used for me to have their own or a second program, their own training program. And that is the only program I think that we need to be in the institution of the world for their work. Come on, we need to be the company of the community and not the company from from bank and the other of their when I said earlier that we must make community engagement in between livelihood models, I also meant in the space of food and agriculture, microarchery, and village and land, 52 properties in the whole country on I have a very small planning commission job. The fact of the matter is that milk. India is the number one producer of milk, but do you know it is part of the milk production? Nobody knows that. We were wasting milk. We were wasting milk for two years ago with a shortage of milk because of the lack of processing. So I think we must understand supply chain. We must understand cow farms. We must understand the credit requirements of those cow farms into the person who owns the cow and the buffalo. The one family buffalo or the one family cow is serving that whole family of four or five. One cow serves the whole family. That's 20, 80 kilos a day. And if you multiply that to 30 or 40 kilos a day, they make a profit. So, fact of the matter is that we must get into micro enterprises, including food product enterprises, because they have the maximum employment and health. health and wellness and livelihood are multiplied by farmers for them. We must accept that. Can I just take a quick question about our bank? You know, you are, you are uh, spot on about you know, the viability of the DC model currently uh, being under stress. See, this is a long term game. You know, financial inclusion is not something which is going to give you very quick dividends. It, it's, a, it's, it's something which will yield you uh, a dividends over a long period of time. And you're right that the, currently it's, it's not a very profitable activity. But it's something which has to be done, and it does present a good opportunity for banks because the market, which is currently not as it's so huge, that if we can get a model right, you know, the, the, the key here is uh, getting the model right. If you can get a model right, and I believe we are, we are well on the way to doing that, if you can get that right, this, is, this will be a, a lucrative you know, opportunity. But in the border, and the budget is one last thing. Yes, sir. Oh, sorry, I thought it had come to
got the car for you yesterday and tomorrow. Yes, sir, I'm going to take one life. My question is to this is a great boy. Fantastic idea. Any we have any idea about any technology that we can see that is going to be problem that is very very difficult to figure out. Very, very touching question and the uh, most important question, sir. Back to the messages that uh, housing for poor or the less deprived, somewhat deprived, fully affordable housing, as we call it, below 5 lakhs over there, is actually a very good segment to be in. We have, we have balanced some microfinance groups. Instead of a microfinance group coming in charge of the bank, and uh, to currently set up a micro housing finance group. You won't believe it, we're getting more proposals from the micro housing finance group than from micro finance group. And they are very credible. People are buying homes. Everybody has an aspiration to buy a good home. And there are a lot of commitments which are happening. And concurrent with that, the good thing is that leaders who are sitting in this room as well are also committing themselves to urban waste. To renewable waste, you know, also making sure that energy costs somewhere gets somewhat disseminated. So I think the affordable housing proposition is a very, very attractive proposition and also qualifies for priority sector work. I know that you could have the conversation. Thank you all for joining us on this discussion and fun to join this session today.